So today's session is all about how to write a marketing plan. So I've actually tailored this specifically for entry level people or for people that are going into a marketing role, because one of the things you are pretty much guaranteed to be asked to do when you uh, apply for a job in marketing in publishing is to write a marketing plan. Whether you be an entry level, an exec or a manager, you will be asked to do it, just like an editor will be asked to proofread something or to generally edit a piece of text. In today's session, you will learn how to format a marketing plan, because I know that this trips people up and it is ridiculously simple, but until you know that, it seems complicated. And then also how to pitch a plan in an interview. So the steps that we are going to cover today, and I broke it down to five, uh, and these are just how you would format your plan, how you would come up with the information for the plan, and uh, just what to consider whilst writing one. Um, so the first step is what is the book? We'll come on to this and then considering your audience, what is your budget, your aims and objectives, and then finally the fun parts, as I like to call it, is the brainstorming of the actual plan. Okay, for today's um, book choice, I've actually gone for a simple one that we've probably all read or at least seen the adaptation of, which is Pride and Prejudice. I'm just using this as an example because I thought it was fairly easy. Um, and this is where the first part comes into play, which is find out about your book. So when you are going to an interview, you'll be normally asked to do a marketing plan, as I say, and they will normally give you a title and the author's name. They may even send you the book to read if you're lucky, um, but for the most part, you'll just get the title and the author's name. But what do you do with that information? The easiest thing to do is actually to go to Amazon. I hate, as a bookseller or publisher, hate recommending people go to Amazon when there are so many amazing independent bookshops out there. But Amazon is where it's at. There is everything you need to know about a book on an Amazon page. I split it into things like the titles on there, uh, the, obviously the author's name, the author bio is on there, the copy, which is a fancy word for the blurb, is on there. You can have a look at the genres by going down and having a look at the charts. So you have the overall chart and then beneath it, there'll be three other charts, which will be things like English crime or women's fiction or really specific like fireman romance. That is a genuine, genuine Amazon chart, by the way. You also have a look at the formats the book is coming out in. So be it ebook or paperback or audiobook or hardback. And when you click on each of those, it will tell you the date that book is coming out on. So for the sake of Pride and Prejudice, I have put the, the title, obviously, the author, the author in this case is the debut author from Bath. We're just going to pretend that um, this wonderful classical author has only just been produced and this is her first book. Um, and the Amazon details are that the ebook is coming out on the 1st of November at 99p and the paperback is coming out on the 1st of January 2021 for 6.99. It's pretty standard ebook and paperback publication prices and the dates are completely random so don't really pay attention to that. The copy or the blurb, uh, I would then look for it and go through it and highlight keywords. So in that it might be things like the main character is called Elizabeth Bennet and the main love interest of Mr Darcy. It's set in a county which name escapes me right now. It's the Bennet family, Bingley, the bad guys Mr Wickham, um, all of those kind of things. And you should be able to get all of that pretty much from any copy, the location, the title, the, uh, the character's name I mean, um, the general plot line, the location even, and then the comps as well. So a lot of um, titles on Amazon will have things like perfect for fans of. Um, I know that with women's fiction, a lot of the things at the minute is Beth O'Leary's The Flat Share because that book is massive and really good. Um, but for the sake of Pride and Prejudice, having a look at one of the Pride and Prejudice pages on Amazon, I pulled off the strap line, which is a romance of manners. The strap line being the title Top. Above the blurb, there's normally a, a line in bold, and that's called the strap line. And so um, on this page, it was a romance of manners, and the competitors beneath it was actually Rachel Haw and Dinah Jeffries. So we do that. If there isn't a line that says perfect for fans of, you can actually have a look at the Amazon boxes underneath, which says readers that have purchased this book also purchased or suggested reads or things like that. Take those with a pinch of salt, though. They're not always the actual competitors, but it's a good place to look for comparison titles and to see what kind of campaigns will run for those titles as well, just to give you a general idea. The other place to look for competitors is actually in the charts themselves. So if, if in this case, it's in the historical fiction chart, click on that and you can have a look in the top 100, see which books are selling. Again, maybe go back and look at their campaigns, look at their keywords, look at their comps. It's all Amazon really, there's so much information, it's just a bit of digging. So that's the first thing I would suggest you do when doing a marketing. And I'd write all of this down on a separate notebook or in a Microsoft Word. Just write down title, genre, format, publication date, price, comp, strapline, keywords, all of that. Next, it is your audience. 
Uh, the mistake that I think happens here most commonly is that people make their audiences really, really targeted initially, and it should be the complete opposite. When you start a marketing plan, make sure your audience is as broad as it can possibly be. As you do more activities, such as advertising, sharing on social media, you get reviews in, that's when you can start pulling your audience in tighter and make it more targeted. But initially, you don't want to alienate anybody. You don't know who wants to read this book yet, particularly if it's a debut, and particularly if you haven't read the book, it's best to keep it really, really broad. This is where you should ask yourself lots and lots of questions, such as, where do these readers shop, for example? Which is one of the questions I put there. Do they shop only in Waterstones? Do they shop in supermarkets? Do they shop in WH Smith's Travel when they're on holiday? Do they only read three books a year, or do they read a book a week? Are they parents? What age are they? What's their gender? And just yourself, who's likely to read this book? And as politically incorrect as it is to say, be stereotypical. So with this being a historical fiction novel, I kind of generally just naturally assume that it's gonna be people that are probably my parents' age and older. So let's say they're 40 to 65 plus, but because I'm not sure, and because the main character in this book is actually in her early 20s, I'm gonna put that the audience should be between 20 and 65 plus. The one thing you know for sure is that the audience of this book is very unlikely to be middle grade or YA. So you can cut out that kind of age six to 18 bracket. And then in terms of gender, I mean, men do read historical fiction, but because this book is a historical romance, because the main protagonist is female and it's about her sisters, I'm just gonna suggest that this is probably a women's book. Like I said, politically incorrect, um, but you can be stereotypical when initially doing a broad audience. So there you go, that already tells you women aged 25 to 65 plus are gonna read this book. In terms of their shopping habits, I don't know. Maybe they do shop in Waterstones. Maybe they do only shop in supermarkets. I'm gonna keep it broad, put both of those in there. Um, and then it's things like, are they gift buyers? Are they going to buy this for their grandmother? What time of year does it come out? Is it coming out at Christmas time? Is this the perfect gift book? Do I want to market this as a book perfect to get your grandma for Christmas Day? Who knows? Maybe I do. Looking at the dates, November to January, possibly. Um, you can think about other dates as well. If it's Mother's Day, International Women's Day, maybe there's a historical awareness day somewhere. Look at those sorts of things as well, pulling all those ideas together really stereotypical keep it broad put everything down what tv do they watch what music do they listen to if it's applicable are they podcast listeners do they like to travel is this a perfect beach read there are so many things you can pull out here so really have fun with this and like i said make it broad make it at least a paragraph i'd say at least two lines two to four lines worth of potential audience details because the more things you do later on after you brainstorm that's when you'll figure out actually who you're specific targeted niche audience is budget oh i'm rubbing my hands together because i know that this is a uh, interesting topic for many of us so with budget particularly with marketing plans for entry level and at interview stage you are very very rarely given a budget to work with because marketing plans at entry level stage are not about how well you work to a budget that's what happens after you get the job it's actually they want to see how your mind works what ideas you come up with how you would attack a plan like how would you come up with your ideas they don't really want to know if you can work to a thousand pound budget or to no budget at all they just want to see your ideas and what you would do if you had so and so budget so whilst i wouldn't say go crazy i'm not about to say um go put an idea down that says let's paint the um the book's cover on a rocket and send it into space because that's not going to happen but also if it's things like outdoor marketing which is when you see posters on the underground which cost a lot of money if it's relevant if you think it will sell the book if you think it's a good idea for this specific book that they've given you put it down because it might well be a very good idea they might not have the budget for it but that doesn't mean it's not a good idea and you shouldn't put it down so all of these things to consider so if you are doing a going for a job at an ebook publisher maybe don't start putting things down for things that would only happen for a paperback or a hardback, such as a Waterstone signing. If it's ebook only, you're not going to be able to do a Waterstone signing or any kind of exclusive content with Waterstones. So you've got to consider all of those things as well. That's why I bring up budget, even though for the most part, you won't actually have a budget to work with. So you can think, not unlimited, I would probably say in your mind of minds, don't go crazy, but also don't hold back. So yeah, don't go for the rocket, but you know, go for posters on the underground is the most expensive thing I put down in the marketing plan and have. I hope that makes sense. We can touch that again on that again at the end if anyone wants me to clarify anything or has any additional questions. Number four is aims and objectives. I actually think 
this is the most important bit for a marketing plan at interview stage, which I think is a bit controversial because everyone assumes that that's the brainstorming portion of this, of the actual plan. But aims and objectives are really, really important for tying everything together. It is the mwah, chef's kiss of a marketing plan. It really is, pulls everything and it shows the interviewer particularly why you came up with these ideas and why you think they will work. Because ultimately for a marketing plan, everything you put down is to do something. And that's your aims objectives, it's to achieve your aims, achieve your objectives. As an example, I've mentioned that you need to consider the format of the book and the company you're going for an interview for. So if it's the ebook only, the aims should be things like Kindle charts and sales and revenue, not revenue, sorry, reviews and uh, things like that. If it's for a paperback, you can start considering things like maybe you want a really big name author, maybe you want to do a Waterstones exclusive content or you want to do X, Y, and Z, go for an award, get on the Reese Witherspoon's book club or the Zoella book club or another book club, um, you know, that might be achievable. And if it's a hardback, if it's a larger company, one of the big five, so Penguin, Hachette, HarperCollins, Simon & Schuster, and the fifth one I always forget, I'm sorry, I can't even remember, um, then it might be something like the Sunday Times chart, it might be going for the Booker if you're a literary company, if that's what the, their fiction is, it really just depends. So, but whatever you do, do consider the format and the publishing company you're going for, but I would say put down at least two to four objectives on your marketing plan. If you want to stick with simple, then I'd say put a certain number of Amazon reviews, um, maybe a number of pre-orders you want to get. Maybe you want to get 10 author reviews. doesn't need to be big name authors. If you want big name authors, put that down, 10 big name authors. So yeah, definitely put these down and I think, like I said, tailor it. So as an example, if you're going for an ebook company and you put your aim down as Kindle Top 100, don't then start putting a load of paperback ideas down. You should really focus on your ebook strategies. As I can't stress enough, I think having an objective, having a goal to work to is really, really good and it just tailors your marketing plan so much better and also makes it easier to pitch at the interview that you have after you get the assignment. Uh, so with a marketing plan, I should say, sometimes before the first interview, they'll ask you to write a marketing plan. And sometimes it's what they ask you to write after a first interview, before a second interview. It depends on the publishing company. For the most part, it normally happens in between. You have an initial interview, then you get asked to write a marketing plan, and then you have a second interview to just pitch your marketing plan so they can see how your mind works. And from there, they make a decision. But yes, so definitely put down aims and objectives between two and four. Now we start on brainstorming. This is the fun bit. Oh, I love brainstorming. I'm all excited. I did a load of marketing plans today to get hyped up for this. Brainstorming, or another word for it would be brain dumping, is where you just put down every idea you have. Okay, everything. I mean, don't worry about tailoring it right now. Right now, just put down every idea you have. Now, if it's something you've seen someone else has done, it's something you really would like to try. It doesn't matter if you don't know how to do it. I mean, none of you have worked in publishing before. It's likely that you don't know how to do this stuff, and that's absolutely fine. In marketing, you, you learn on the job. The joy of marketing is that it changes constantly. So when you learn one thing, there is always something else to learn. So really do not panic if you don't know how to run a Facebook ad or you don't know how to X, Y, Z, design something on Photoshop. It really doesn't matter. Just put down your ideas no matter what they are. For this as well, the formatting, I would make it as simple as possible. And I'm just talking bullet points. So to this day, my marketing plans, I have the title, I have the author name, I have the ebook and the paperback, the publications, the formats and the publication date and the price. I then have uh, the strap line, I then have the budget, I then have the aims and objectives again in bullet points and then finally I split it into kind of initial research so that's where I put like keywords or, or just competitors and then I have the pre-order plan which is before the book is released, how am I going to raise awareness for it, how am I going to get people buzzing for this book and then finally post-publication, so the book is out, how am I going to get people to buy it, how am I going to get people to review it. Uh, with your formatting as well, I would keep it to one to two pages. Anything longer than two pages on an interview marketing plan is just too much because you have to go through this and um, it shows really like great initiative and drive and passion, but that to me doesn't suggest they've tailored it quite right. So for the time being, stick to one to two. Okay, and then initially, additionally as well, sorry, initially, additionally, I've also added that you should include images and screenshots if you feel comfortable. If you have any experience with designing, be it on Canva or PicMonkey or Photoshop, or you're just a really great illustrator, I would include those if you want to. It really won't make or break the job. It's just kind of, I just find it helps prove a point uh, or it just helps you 
keep on track, that sort of thing. So if you have a particularly strong design idea that you think would really work for this book, then if you have a mock-up, show it. You know, this is the point, this is the point where you can really show off your skills and your ideas. And that's what they want at this stage. They don't want a perfect marketing plan they can take away and go run with it that afternoon, because that's not how marketing plans work in the real world. We actually do collaborate with everybody before we even get started. We have lots and lots of meetings. So with this, they just want to see how your mind works and what your skills are, what you think would work, all of that. So really, like I said, brain dump it, put everything down, then you're going to tailor it based on your objectives, based on the audience. You can cut things, you can add things. Really don't be afraid to mess around with everything. And then very end, just neaten it all up. With that in mind, this is not how I would format precisely um, <laughs> my marketing plan. I've just done it for the sake of this slide so it all fit. Uh, but it is the basics, you know, the title at the top with the um, author's name, the genres there, the pub dates there, the strap lines there, like I said. And then for this, I've just put... The aims and objectives for this book, completely made up, of course, is that I want to get into the top 100 Kindle charts, I want to get 200 reviews on Amazon, and I want to get 500 paperback pre-orders. Um, the reason being that the paperback is out two months after the ebook. So during those two months when the book is out in ebook, I still want people to be buying the paperback as well. So I'm going to be pushing that, for example. That's where my line of thinking was coming from. And then with regards to like, the pre-order plan, things to remember specifically with a book, okay, is that every book has a cover. It has copy, a blurb, and it has an A author. Use all three of them, okay? So with the cover, do a cover reveal. Can you involve the author in that? Can they reveal the cover? Will you ask bloggers to review the cover? Will you do it, make a video or a gift to reveal the cover? Will it be a design asset? How are you going to get this cover in front of everybody? Are you just going to put it on Twitter? Are you going to put it on Facebook? Are you going to put it on Instagram? Really think about all of those things. So I'm just reading your question. How can I know how many pre-orders a book can aim for? Is there any way we can find an average pre-order number? There isn't one specifically, but I would definitely stick pre-orders under a thousand initially. And because at the end of the day, you can explain in your interview, I don't know what pre-orders this author normally gets, um, but I would like on, in general to get a thousand ebook pre-orders and at least 500 paperback pre-orders. That would be my ultimate game. Game, my ultimate aim even for these types of books without knowing what they previously sold or we think could sell. Okay, I hope that helps. But um, I see what you mean. It's difficult to know when you're writing a marketing plan because you don't have the budget, you don't have the um, average pre-orders, things like that. But that really, I promise, doesn't matter at this point. It's just so you can explain why you thought that number, even if it is lower, even if it is higher, it's still good. It's a bit like when you're at school and they tell you to aim for an A+, plus, even though you actually want a B. Aim for an A+, plus to get a B still works in this, I promise, in this situation as well. I'm going to come back to questions in just a moment as I explain the pre-order portion. So yes, yeah, so that's the cover reveals as well. So with pre-order, like I said, it's all about awareness. You want people to know about this book. It's the pre-publication. They can't read it yet unless you've got early copies, but you want them to see the cover. You want them to know the author's name. You want them to know the basic storyline. You want to know what genre it is. You want them to get a buzz going. So that's where you've got to consider your ideas. How am I going to get a buzz going? without having a proof copy, for example, because that's just probably unlikely, particularly during this current situation with COVID. Um, very helpfully, I know, I put something creative. So this is where, I can't help you with this, this is all very top line. Um, and these have to be your own ideas because that's how you're gonna get a job. It's from your own thoughts, how your mind works. So do something creative. Um, as an example of something I've done, for a book that I did, I actually created a uh, beach in the office and we took photos and we shared it on Instagram and to show off the proofs to say, look, this book is coming. We're on the beach having a great time. So that's something creative there. Another thing might be just, you know, sending out chocolates to a load of reviewers with a copy of the book or with a sampler or with a press release, anything like that. Just something to get buzz going. OK. Also, this is something I doubt many of you will know about yet if you're entry level stage, but things like advertising, you will generally have pre-order advertising. And then for your post publication plan. By this point, you should know who your audience is. You should, as in, have more targeted audience, I mean. Uh, you should know how well reviews are doing. So if your review aims is to get to 200 reviews, but it's really struggling, either you can press on with that and try something else to push reviews, maybe having a blog tour, anything like that. Uh, or you might change your aim completely and say, right, reviews aren't coming in. Let's change this. We want sales instead. You can constantly pivot. So one of the words I love to share is pivotability. It's not actually a real word, at least I don't think it is. Pivotability. In marketing, plans change. 
all the time and this year is a spot on indicator of that you know with covid no one planned for this all of our ideas for the summer went out the window pretty much became purely digital because paperback stores were closed independent stores were closed events just didn't happen so we have to constantly be thinking on our toes so things change so if your aim is this and later on it changes to that that's not a failure that's just pivoting okay and you can again explain that in your interview by saying these are my initial aims objectives they might change as the campaign grows if it did this is what i would do xyz okay cool i'm just going to go to questions quickly ah so create assets sorry is um for like images so when you go onto twitter have a look at um a book that you like go onto an author's page for example and you'll probably see a square image or a rectangular image and it has the book on it and it might have some text on it or it might have the coming out date or it could just literally be an image with the book on it that's an asset that's just a, an image a social media image for the most part is also what they use in advertising so press releases actually come under pr so publicity so marketing people do not write press releases unless you are a marketing and pr person so um, some context into my previous role digital publisher i was the marketing and pr so i did write a press release um, but if you work at a big five company that will be written for you and if that's something you want to learn more about do let me know and I'll probably do that I can potentially do that in another uh, workshop or as a blog I can definitely look into that okay and what are the best ways authors can be utilized this is a good question so authors it really depends on the author because some authors don't like to be involved at all they don't have any social media they're very private maybe they write under a pseudonym so you've got to definitely research your author so look at their bio look at their website look at their social media if they have it uh, even a debut author will probably have some sort of personal social media in this day and age so definitely go and check that out and from there you can kind of get ideas you know and work with that uh, it kind of lets you know how tech savvy they are and then it's, you can make plans around that so maybe it's things like uh, you would help them with scheduling posts for their social media so that they're sending out the same messages as you are or it could be they'll do some video content for you or they'll write a blog for you so yes, yeah, so definitely look at their bio because that's where you'll get an idea of what authors can and can't do. And then from there, maybe make some plans because like I said, you can use authors in any way. So during COVID, we did the Avon Book Club. Um, we did the Avon Lockdown Show on Instagram. We asked them to send in their own videos. They did their own readings of their books. They did bookshelf tours. They did desk tours. You know, they did get to know me videos, all of those things. So if your aim is to raise awareness for it's a debut or because you just want to raise the author's profile, then maybe your aim would be to get to help the author reach a certain amount of followers or to start a YouTube channel or anything like that. So definitely put that down as well. Do you encourage authors to open social media accounts? For the most part, yes. Um, we always have a meeting of authors beforehand to see what their level of confidence is. So you can even put that on your plan as a thing I, to discuss with author level of confidence, to discuss social media with author and agent if they have one. But yeah, for the most part, having an author as an extra asset is incredibly helpful, particularly when you don't have a budget or if you are a smaller company, because authors really do make publishing companies. You know, Avon, the, the, the division of HarperCollins I work for, won Imprint of the Year this year, but we wouldn't have won that without our amazing authors. So authors are a really big part of your arsenal. I'm going to come back to questions in a moment. Let me just do a time check. Okay, got 15 more minutes. We're all good. Like I said, do tell me if I'm rushing at all. Right, so I've talked about this already, but how to discuss a plan at an interview. So when you've asked to create a plan, they really, really want to see how your mind works. Okay, so that's the, the main thing to go in. Make sure that you have practice pitching your plan, that everything ties together. That if you were aiming for a Sunday Times bestseller, there is maybe paperback advertising on there. If you've aimed for a top 100 Kindle chart, then maybe there's a load of social media design assets, those images I talked about with roundels, with the price on it, or you know, ebook out now, things like that. And make sure your messaging's ready. So that's things like your copy line, so your um, best book of 2021, for example. Keep the formatting really simple and clear. Times New Roman, 12 point, 1.5 spacing, bullet points, headers. I mean, it's up to you how you design it. So feel free to add a bit of flair if you want to. If you want to add color, if you want to stress certain points, if you want to try different headers, by all means, go ahead. There is no right or wrong way to write a marketing plan. Um, I know from experience, that every single person that I work with in marketing at HarperCollins writes their plans differently. There is no right or wrong way. It's just make sure it's formatted simple and clearly can be followed. And no matter what you do, everything that goes on your marketing plan has to be towards making that book sell, making that book 
get reviews whatever your aims objectives are it has to be towards that so don't put something on your plan which has absolutely nothing to do with promoting the book or promoting the author make sure everything is about that because that is what they want to see potential questions that they might ask you are things like why did you choose reviews as your aim or why did you choose sales as your aim and this is where you come back to the well they're a debut author i really want to raise their profile um, they've previously been published and their average review rate is this I think they could be as big as this author, you know, things like that. You want to go in and be confident in your why you've made these choices. Okay. And then what was your thought process in choosing to run? I put competition, ads, mailer, social moment, whatever that moment is. Um, and that might be because on this day, it's 100 days until Christmas. So I thought this would be the perfect time to do a big song and a dance moment. Um, or on this day, it's the, uh, <laughs> it's the dog awareness day and the book is about dogs. Therefore, I'm going to make a big song and dance moment about this. It could simply be it's a month until publication or uh, it's the author's birthday. I've done that. So, you know, it's you choose your moments. So definitely put those down and make sure you do your research about those sorts of things as well. Um, and then which other books do you compare this to and why? This is where you can use your knowledge of their competitors. So looking at the perfect four, if they've mentioned them in the copy, looking at uh, Amazon and seeing what they've said is like suggested to read. Also looking at the chart positions or even just at your own head. You'll be surprised by what you already know and what you've already seen. So if you uh, we want to do a bit of research into this before you go into job interviews or just in general to practice go to bookshops and have a look at what's on Waterstones is kind of front and center table or the WH Smith's top 20 chart or just in general bookseller chart that's always a brilliant one and you can kind of see which books are new which books are selling who's getting the most buzz you know that sort of thing and that's important to follow those trends to follow those highlights of the year that sort of thing so it's uh, particularly at the end of the year I know the bookseller does it's um competition to look at the different covers that's a great one to look at because it really tells you about what was working this year and what wasn't so the materials are out there it's just a matter of looking for them and then when you have to explain why you chose those books you can say those reasons you can say it because this book is reviewing really well because it was a suggested read because i saw a lot of people sharing this book with that book if the book's budget doesn't cover all these activities which activities would you adapt or remove this is kind of a curveball so you haven't been very unlikely to have got a budget. So when they kind of talk to you about the budget and adapting and removing things, you have to be confident again in what you think is less important and also making an argument for things that you think are going to be worth spending the budget. So if something like advertising, you think ads are going to really, really work for this book, you think getting it everywhere um, and targeting specific groups like mothers, for example, if it's a book about mums and dads and kids and you know that targeting a mum's net or mother load or net mums they're all called the same thing you know if you target those people you know they're going to buy this book and it's going to cost money I would defend that position but if it's a book about mums but it's not you don't think mums net is that kind of audience for some reason you know maybe the, the book is a crime book about mums maybe the mum has killed their child maybe that's not going to be their thing uh, instead you can look at other other ideas and say well ads might not work in this case so maybe i'll try xyz you can pivot it's all about pivotability just be sure you're confident even if you're not sure appear confident it's a trick for life um, but appear confident there is no right or wrong answer at all when it comes to marketing plans you didn't know you didn't have a budget so it doesn't matter if you put an idea down that you couldn't do it's still an idea that could be adapted into something else at a later date it is still something you could discuss so don't worry about any of that for the time being just be aware that they may throw in that curveball and ask you to what you would do how you would pivot you could also just say if you're really not sure you'd collab with the team uh, in order to find the best activities in place of budget for example and then ideally they'd love they'd say to you if you had more budget what would you do and that's when you should be able to go crazy and see things like oh i'd love to do outdoor marketing i'd love to make a waterstones window um <laughs> i'd love to blast the book cover on the tower of london like they did the hillary mantel book i mean that honestly best marketing i've seen all year it's all those sorts of things definitely practice beforehand make notes beforehand as well if you have uh, when you go into an interview i always say take two copies maybe three of your plan and on your co on, on your copy of the plan write some extra notes maybe some things you didn't think would work but maybe you could bring up in the interview if you're not so sure um ideas you know if i had budget i would do this feel free to do all of that they're not going to see it they're not going to question it it's all your own thoughts 
it will calm you down as well. It's always useful to have notes. I did definitely speed through that. Got 10 more minutes to go until we can get onto proper questions. But yeah, so the key things to remember, everything you do is a strategy. So with a marketing plan, be it for an interview, be it for a self-published author, uh, be it for an actual book you are working on, everything needs to be strategized. If the book is coming out in ebook only, then your brainstorming ideas for pre-order and post-publication are going to be tailored to the ebook, not to the paperback. If the book is coming out on Christmas Day, then you're very likely to be doing a load of Christmassy stuff. You're not unlikely to be doing Halloween promotion. It's the obvious things there. Just make sure everything is strategized. And then also your aims. Like I said really important to have two to four aims on there be it reviews be it sales be it anything just make sure you have them on there and you can tailor it back to it so if your aim is to get to 200 reviews make sure something in your pre-order or post-publication list is something to do with reviews be it getting it to book bloggers getting it to more authors uh, having a read along on instagram anything at all like that make sure it all comes back to your aims and objectives and you can talk about it in your interview and then finally really importantly because it is an interview process, because you do want to impress, make sure you're creative. I mean, if you don't mind my swearing, be creative as fuck, go crazy. Just absolutely be sure to put something down that is a bit of a curveball for them, that's something they hadn't expected, that's something really, really fun. Um, it could be anything at all, you know, and it could be something as simple as cupcakes on publication day, or it could be a stunt, or honestly, there are so many things you could do and it really does depend on the book, which is why I can't really tell you what it is. Um, and it really has to be your own idea. But have a look, if you need ideas, have a look at what other people have been doing, be it in a crime book, a romance, a historical, a sci-fi, go and have a look at what they did at Yauk. They always really, really creative at young adult literary convention. Um, you can go and have a look at the Romantic Novelist Association, hashtag book blogger. You can see so many things that other people have done, be it from five years ago to today, there is always something going on. Same for bookstagram, Instagram, you have everything at your fingertips creatively. You have the entire internet there just make sure you put a few creative things down simple or really not simple just make sure they're on there as well so strategize make sure your aims are there and it's tailored to your aims and make sure you are creative af when it comes to your plan because that's what they want to see question time right i'm just going to scroll up and have a look at some of the questions that i've missed for debut authors which is the more important part of the strategy pre-orders or post-publication where should your effort most be expended uh, every author is different really it's extremely true some authors I know are all about sales all about royalties other authors I know are all about reviewers and blogging communities it really is dependent entirely on the author and you would get to know them and you would learn from that experience it's not something you would necessarily need to worry about at an interview process you can definitely put or mention in your interview I would like to have a meeting with the editor and the author uh, to discuss their priorities and then tailor the plan to that as well but it really, until you meet the author, you won't know. But definitely have a look at that. Ooh, lots of people want to learn about press releases. Good to know. Good to know. If you're working on a tight and short schedule between a coverville post and the pre-order post on social media, how do you suggest creating maximum hype for the title in that short amount of time? Okay. Joe, I'm just trying to figure out, when you say coverville post and pre-order post, so for me, that's pretty much the same thing. Because when you do a coverville, that is pre-ordering. Um, unless you mean doing the cover reveal, but there's no link to buy as yet, and then there's a pre-order post, as in with a link to buy. In which case, it's all about just getting the cover out there as much as possible. Yeah, because I think assets, so design and showing off the cover is really important, um, particularly on social media. And you can do it at any point with or without a link. Obviously, I think with a link, it's better because you are encouraging pre-orders then. But I mean, it takes three times. It takes a person seeing an ad three times before they're likely to buy something. So even if you don't have a link yet showing off that cover for as much as possible on social media wherever you want um i think still works so i hope that answers that a bit are we allowed to bring a physical plan oh always always bring a physical plan just like bringing a notebook to a, an interview you can always bring extra bits and bobs evidence even um you just will have to be confident in talking through the plan as well that's why i say practice the pitch what is the best way to contact big authors for them to review a book so again this is something that PR would generally handle um, but if you're in, in a company that doesn't have a PR person so like I said when I was there marketing and PR then actually you can either contact them through their agency um, some of them on their website have their own email address so you can contact them there um, and sometimes it's just a matter of contacting their publisher as well so 
it's all it's a bit of um a bit of a digging game you have to kind of dig around for those little information you can also of course ask on twitter and instagram if you feel confident doing that so but yeah but like i said more pr than marketing do you need a marketing degree prove experience to get entry level and publish it no 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 nope 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 um i only say that because i don't have a marketing degree i have a degree in history um and i didn't have any experience in marketing before i got my first job in marketing um bit of backstory on that i actually got all of my first four publishing jobs, every job except the job I'm currently in, uh, because I had a blog. Uh, I'm not saying that you need to have a blog to get a job either, um, but the blog for me just showed that I was uh, creative, I knew how to design, I knew how to code, I knew how to write, I knew how to use social media, I knew how to promote myself as a personal brand, therefore I knew how to promote books as well. But you definitely don't need that, you don't need a marketing degree. Previous experience in the industry right now is ridiculously tough to get, which is part of the reason why I'm running these workshops. Um, I do also know that for some people, they need tons of it before they get a break in, they get a full-time job. For other people, it's a little bit, and for, I have a friend that didn't do any work experience at all but got a job. It really depends on the time of year, your CV, your confidence, your interviewability, the amount of applicants. You know, Penguin Random House entry-level job had 700 applicants the other day, but then an independent uh, digital publisher that no one's ever heard of had probably about five. So it really does depend on that sort of thing. But I would never ever penalise anybody if they didn't have a marketing degree. And actually, uh, within marketing, I think it really depends on your creativity rather than your experience and your credentials. So unlike with editorial, where you need to be able to kind of proofread and have a really good sense of grammar, um, which is why I never got into editorial because I am the typo queen. Marketing is much more about your creativity, your creative side, your entrepreneurship, your ability to, to talk about books confidently, like I say. So don't worry if you don't have a marketing degree. Um, I think an MA is helpful. Uh, I never tell someone you have to get an MA, but if you feel like you need one or you feel like it would help or you would really like to do one, then by all means, go ahead. You will definitely learn a lot of skills in that. But also just doing these workshops, talking to people, networking, going to events, asking for advice on Twitter or Instagram, or via email absolutely fine and uh, any extra skills any extra side hustles you have be it a podcast a blog an instagram if you're an artist if you i don't know anything really feel free to put that on there on your cv as well it just kind of shows those extra skills and i think within marketing you need those extra skills to make campaigns stand out so definitely put that down what is a in brackets serious mistake you've seen someone do or you've done in a marketing plan um, get the name wrong of the book so that's that's a simple but also quite serious mistake don't don't get the name wrong um i don't honestly i don't think there's a mistake to a marketing plan unless you put it's a thousand pound budget and you add an extra zero and you ten thousand and you spend a day making a plan for a ten thousand pound budget book when in actual fact it's a thousand i mean that's an error i wouldn't <laughs> It's not, there's no, like I said, there's not really a mistake you can make that everything is fixable in a marketing plan. When it's internal, there is no mistakes to be made. It's all brainstorming. How would you make your application cover letter to a marketing entry level role stand out? Okay, we're definitely going to be touching upon this in another workshop. So I'm just going to scroll past that for the time being, but I promise I am coming to it. On average, how many marketing plans do you tend to write a year? As many as the books we publish per year. And I don't have a figure for that. I'm afraid it really depends again on publishing company and uh, but I write a marketing plan for every single title I do. Are there overlaps between sales and marketing in terms of task responsibilities as well as skills? Marketing overlaps with sales and PR in particular. Skill wise, it's very, very similar and uh, marketing and sales worked very closely together. You know, it depends on if it's going into Waterstones, if it's going into supermarkets, if it's an ebook only, if it's Amazon, you, you're going to work to promote to those stores and therefore you're going to work with the salesperson in order to promote so yes and then same with PR there's a massive overlap there reviews bloggers who comes under what jurisdictions events because obviously you're doing the promotion of events as well so publicity will organize it but marketing will promote it so there's lots of um different crosses uh, but the easiest way to differentiate them is PR is free and marketing is paid for not strictly entirely true but for the majority PR free marketing paid for what would you suggest if you're given an extremely low budget or no money for a campaign? Uh, be creative, definitely. It does happen a lot more than people think. Utilize the author, utilize the design, um, cut corners where you can with regards to design. You don't need to get a designer in. You can do it yourself. I mean, not for the cover, obviously, but for the social assets. I do a lot of the design work myself for some of our titles. 
Um, teach yourself skills as well. I mean, I taught myself how to make videos and how to edit videos and how to do GIFs or GIFs, however you pronounce them, um, and those sort of things. And they can make a campaign and just, yeah, get the book everywhere. You can do that without money. Okay, what's the most creative marketing idea you've seen at an interview? I'm not sure, because there isn't really one idea that's stuck in my mind, because actually every person I've ever interviewed that's brought a marketing idea, who's done a marketing plan, they have always brought something that was completely unexpected because it's, that it's coming from their mind. It's, how they've, it's something they've seen. It's something they would like to try. So I, there isn't a specific one I've seen, but there's, no matter what, every person I've seen has brought something. Okay. How effective is this marketing plan for books that have already been published maybe for a year or so? So in terms of that question, I'm not sure if you mean if, it's, if they're asking you to write a marketing plan for a book that's already released. For the most part, they won't do that because they don't want you to see how they marketed the book. They want you to come up with your own plan. So usually it's for a book that hasn't come out yet. Um, but if it does happen, then it's kind of uh, what you would do differently, in which case it'd still be the same process. You'd still look up the information. You'd still put your aims and objectives in because you don't know what the pre-orders were, what the review, well, you can see the reviews, but you won't know what the sales are, for example. Um, and you can still brainstorm, you know, I would do this, I would do that. I would involve this person more. I would do this more. I would do video content more. You know, I could look back at the plans I did in February for books that came out in summer and then look at the plans I've done now and compare them and actually what worked and what didn't work and what could have worked if COVID hadn't happened. It's all learning curve. So really, but yeah, but I think it still work. If you're writing a marketing plan for an interview around now, should we note about COVID and what we would do if COVID situation hasn't resolved versus normal world? That's an interesting question. Hmm. I would put both, you know, it's kind of because you get to pitch your plan at these interviews. I would definitely mention that um, put down everything you would do regardless of COVID and then say if COVID hasn't resolved by this point then it's likely that this this idea would uh, not be possible in which case I would adapt it to xyz that sort of thing just to kind of show your pivotability once again but you could I definitely put down both so for the time being pretend COVID doesn't exist but make sure there are also things in there that are not COVID dependent as well Okay. Do marketing teams use freelancers? If so, which aspects? Depends on the marketing team, depends on the publisher. Um, things like design, things like bloggers sometimes, um, as in to do blog tours, I mean, really depends on the publishing company. Or you do not, how much detail do you need to go into easy? Do you need to say how many posts on social media? Absolutely not. Don't ever think to yourself, okay, I'm going to put, we're going to do a hundred posts on social media. Unless there's a specific reason, like the book is called a hundred social media posts. There's no need to put a number. Uh, just say posts on social media. That, that tells them everything they need to know. You don't need to go into that level of specifics, I promise. Okay. Do you have a website, et cetera, you'd recommend to find jobs in publishing? I'm definitely going to touch upon this, but the strategy for SYP, Society of Young Publishers, the bookseller, Creative Access and Pub Interns on Twitter. Um, there are lots of other Twitter accounts, so publishing jobs. The Publishing Post is great um, for their new, um, if you subscribe to their magazine that comes out, then you will get the, um, they have their jobs on there. Uh, look on Indeed as well. Look on publishers' websites. Surprisingly, they do put them on there. Most difficult part of marketing juggling the marketing the amount of campaigns you're juggling be it a small company or a big company you're always juggling campaigns constantly and it's making sure you give every one of those campaigns enough focus um that's a hard part particularly for me because i'm someone that always wants to do better so that's you know i wish there were more hours in the day sometimes to work which isn't healthy but uh, <laughs> but that's the most difficult part for me anyway is juggling all of them okay would it be beneficial to practice and create a portfolio of marketing plans or books that are soon to be already published yes do it I think that's a great idea. I mean, obviously, if you don't have time, don't worry about it. It's not going to change or anything like that. But that's a great way to learn. And, you know, jot down ideas whenever you see something that's um, happening online that you think, oh, that looks great. Or I'd love to learn how to do that. Or that's a really nice image. You know, screenshot it, write it down, put that anywhere. It's not the same as maybe writing the same as a full marketing plan. But yeah, jot down ideas by all means. I think I've got to the end of the questions, but there are more coming in. And we've got six more minutes, I think. So do you keep them coming. Does it change significantly to market a foreign author or translated fiction? This is something I haven't actually done, so I can't really comment on it. I know from going to other events where they've, uh, particularly Japanese fiction, translated Japanese fiction, like Convenience Store Woman, um, it does make a difference because you can't use the author in the same way. Uh, I don't have personal experience, so I can't unfortunately talk about that in as much detail as I'd love to. Great. So we're starting to round up with the thank yous, which is lovely. Very happy. It's helpful. 
Um, if you want to use this last five minutes of just letting me know what you want to learn next in future workshops, um, I'm just going to remind you all now that my next workshop is in two weeks time and it's on how to utilize social media. I'm actually going to be joined by a guest star who is Claire Fenby. She's the digital marketing assistant at One More Chapter at HarperCollins. She is incredible. Uh, she and I are going to be doing an informal chat about how we use um, social media ourselves to promote books. She's a YouTuber and uh, I am a book vlogger um, as well as a side hustler and so going to be doing all of that as well but uh, yeah so definitely do check that out again free pre-registration on Eventbrite same format six to seven on zoom lots of questions and all of that oh yes Facebook group publishing hopefuls go join that too um, it's fairly new I know a few people that are in it um, it's only for people that aren't in publishing already. So for example, I'm not a member because I'm in publishing. It's for people specifically not in publishing and it's on Facebook. So publishing hopefuls, just go search that. They're a really great group, very, very supportive. Yep, the link for the next week will be sent out. Uh, it will go out at 12 p.m. on every single day uh, that the workshops are running. So I've only got two more scheduled in. This one, uh, how to socialize, how to utilize sorry, social media. And then the third one is how to ace a publishing interview. So be sure to join me for that. And then uh, we'll see what happens in, the, uh, in October and what goes on from there. There's another question I'll just quickly answer. Uh, just one question, are blogs better than bookstagrams? Oh, there's, there's no, they're not, neither one is better or worse, trust me. They're, um, oh yeah, particularly if you're trying to get a job in the industry, blogs or bookstagrams, whichever you feel more comfortable with, uh, you could do both if you really want to. I personally am terrible at photography, so blogging is better for me because I love writing. It really is personal preference rather than suitability and skills, I promise. And what if I've worked in publishing, but I'm not currently a full-time employee? Oh, keep going, Nia. You can do it. Trust me. You can do it. I know it's a real struggle when you um, work in publishing part-time or as an intern or a graduate. Keep applying. Keep talking. Keep networking. You'll get there. Podcasts are very important, John. I produce interview podcasts for the New Books Network. How important are podcasts and other interviews for marketing fiction and nonfiction? I think they're increasing in value every single day. Podcasts, particularly over COVID, became very popular. And uh, more and more authors I know are starting their own podcasts when they promote their books. So really important. Something on networking would be really helpful. Good to know. I will be sharing this PowerPoint at a later date, I promise. Okay, right. Well, that's, I'm going to round it up now and finish off. I know we're two minutes early, but do feel free to message me on Twitter if you need anything and have any additional questions. And I will stop sharing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, say goodbye for now. But I hope to see you all again in two weeks or speak to you all again in two weeks, the case may be. And we'll see you soon.